we want on the Trinity stand for truth. That's a topic I like. Now, Ken Hoven doesn't have a YouTube channel, right? All right. Anyway, when you're ready, you're ready. Let me know. All right. So you still can't hear that feedback. I just want to make sure, right? No, no. You're okay. Right. You're okay. I had to turn a little volume up on my end, so I will hear a little bit back myself. As long as you're not hearing it, that's okay. So. That's fine. Yeah, we're doing okay. All right. Well, I'm your guest. Um, you know, I want to, despite our differences, and yeah. I've watched some of your videos this last week here and there. You've kind of been, how can I say it, not as friendly as you were when I came on your channel last yes. week. But yeah. still fair enough. I want to still give you the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. that you've uh, allowed me to come on your channel. Mm -hmm. I don't come on here with any evil motives. I don't come on here with an agenda. Um, I just come on here like for discussion. I mean, okay. Well, I've, over a year and a half ago, uh, or so, ahead. I think when we had our one discussion that didn't last very long, mm -hmm. you know, and you kind of complained a little bit, and rightly so, I get it. I removed you from the stream for about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so, or whatever it may have been. Uh, and the reason why I did that, and the reason why I'm sharing it with you right now, just so you know, um, <clears throat> is just simply because when we were talking we weren't really communicating mm -hmm. and so and like on your channel i mean it's your channel you kick people off you block people you you do what sure. you want to do yeah. um but i did allow you to talk and i did bring you back on so um despite what's happened over the last year and a half and me wanting to talk with you mm -hmm. um we have differences i mean there's big big differences we believe in the bible we believe in the trinity but when it comes to things pertaining to, you know, you, you call yourself, you say you don't have a fight in the, this, you know, either for know, Orthodox right, yeah. or Catholic, oh, yeah. but um, you still nonetheless still defend both of them, but you're not really one or the other. Not and yet. Uh, so I, I come here, I mean, we're going to obviously have a discussion slash debate, but mm -hmm. I come here um, really wanting to talk with you. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't. I'm not running from William. I've I've thrown things out there that I've wanted to have a chat with him before in the past, but I wanted to really have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Okay. You know what I mean? And sure. I mean, you know, that's really what I'm hoping to have with you, and mm -hmm. to find out really what you believe and what you don't believe. I assume, I assume you may have some. You may have some views that William doesn't have. You may have some views that Orthodox people don't have. I can't assume you have all the same views. You know what I mean? Same thing with me as a Protestant, even though I'm not Calvinist or nor classified as Arminian, I'm kind of be your buddy Leighton Flowers. I know you like him. I'm kind of what you call a provisionist. So, mm. but I mean, even with a normal Protestant as you claim to be a while back, not all Protestants always have the same exact views either. And you probably know that as well. So Definitely. a lot of times having a discussion where we can actually just interact and let each other share where they're coming from mm. is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, so just to come back, the reason why there was bad blood is because you mentioned it when you put me behind or backstage is because I was trying to show that we need to be consistent in our method of argumentation. We can't use one form of argumentation <clears throat> when we're arguing for a doctrine we agree, but then <clears throat> use another form of our <clears throat> argumentation that would end up proving too much or contradicting what we believe, and that's what I was trying to show you, but I guess we we're talking past each other. In fact, it, it happened to you in your discussion on <clears throat> the Trinity when Stacy brought up Colossians 1.23, which we'll get to. You saw why this was faulty, but you didn't see it when they were using it against me. So hopefully, by the grace of God, because you believe you have the truth and you're a servant of the truth, we're going to be consistent in the way we argue and not demand of my position what you cannot <clears throat> provide for your position. So this is what I'm going to ask for, consistency. I don't want to cut you off because I don't want people to say I'm being a bully to you. I'm trying to be very nice with you and trying to be gracious to you, especially on my channel. And I don't want to do to you what you did to me. And so I'm trying to show you respect so that the people who are wanting to find a reason to attack me, <clears throat> because that's what they're waiting. They're waiting for me to be mean to you. And I don't want to do that. But Let's be consistent. Don't use one form of argumentation that I can turn against you to destroy what you believe as a Trinitarian or whatever it is. And you'll see that as we begin the discussion. In fact, I don't know if you're aware of it. I just posted the two-part 
responses right now on my blog. It's there about 10 minutes ago, uh, courtesy of McVine. God bless him. He listened to your four-hour session with, I don't know his last name, so I don't want to sound like I'm mocking him. Stevie, what's his last name? Steve Christie is his name. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to mock him here because I want to show you respect. One thing I do want to know, though, because the Protestants are different, is does can he I, believe in sorry, sleep? Can I ask one thing real quick? Yes. I don't before we go somewhere else. Um, yes. And this is just so you're you are being good right now, and I appreciate that. But I Trump. just also need to make a statement of what you just said a second ago. Mm -hmm. You may not agree, but I also don't agree with what you said a second ago when you used the word "how I treated you" a while. Back. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm hoping that <clears> we can <throat> have a a good discussion, however long it lasts. Sure. Um, if you can remember, and just just I'm just kind of just laying some of the background here before you came on my channel that one time i think it was like november mm -hmm. something of 2021 or something like that about a year and a half ago you were doing lots of videos you know attacking me and criticizing me and you have the right to do that for whatever you whatever you want to do yeah call me lots of names you know i won't say them here because they were pretty foul why was that kelly um what's that why was that why were you calling me a rabid satanic uh, dog why yeah why was that do you remember? Um, or? You can answer that in a second, but I just want to make a comment. When you came on my channel and the interaction was going back and forth to which you weren't trying to listen to things I was trying to share with you. So as I said a minute ago, I'm saying it again. Yes, I removed you for a moment, a very short time, but brought you back, didn't block you, didn't ban you. I allowed you and gave you plenty of opportunity to talk. And so you may disagree with that, but I also believe I treated you a lot better than you treat a lot of the people on your channel. Sure. So let me remind you of history. So let's not get this into what started this. We can I move on. Yes. I want to go into the meat of the matter. You had come on my channel in the comment section. Let me remind you of history. When I was having someone discuss the Marian doctrines, you made a comment pretty much attacking me because of these doctrines and pretty much and not those exact terms accuse me of idolatry. What That's did what I say? Happened. Do you remember? No, well, it's been a while. I mean, I said, I'm praying for you, Sam. You no, know, but you said something else, Kelly. That's what got me to react. I, I think my exact words, Sam, I'm praying for you. I, are you becoming Catholic? I think those are the, almost oh, the exact words. That. But it's much more than that. But forget about it. Let's not play the victim. We're here to discuss. And no, I understood what you were saying in that stream. And I was trying to show you why you're inconsistent. So that's okay. Let's not. Let's bury the past. Let's not drag this. Let's get to the point. I'm trying to be patient with you. Let's get them to the argumentation and let's be consistent the way we argue. Don't argue against me the way an anti-Trinitarian would argue against you because that's what you did. And I'll, de I'll demonstrate that. I followed what you said. You'll see that clearly. But let's get to the meat of the matter because people here don't want to hear about our history. That's past. Sure. Let's bury it. Let's continue. Well, I guess for good, a good way to start this discussion because you, you, I think you do say that we have a different way of how we approach things. So let me ask you a simple question where you're at. Mm -hmm. If you're not Catholic officially, and if you're not Orthodox officially, who is your authority that you go to for your truth? I mean, obviously we both go to the Bible. Mm -hmm. We both would claim the Holy Spirit, but who else is your authority that you would claim for truth? The reason why I embarked on this path is because of the early church which you called, which you said in that discussion, that they all believe they based their doctrine. I have the clip. I was going to play it in the discussion at the Trinity. You said, yeah, even the early church went with the Bible, though they held to some weird things. So when I looked at the early church, whom the Lord was working through and preserving the scriptures that now you're using, their understanding of these passages contradict your understanding and my understanding as a Protestant. So that's what got me on a journey towards Orthodox or Catholic because of the early church. And so your answer that. would be the Bible <clears throat> plus church fathers? Yeah, the church fathers who were entrusted with the scriptures according to 1 Timothy 3.15. But we'll get into that. Oh, sure. So just to, add, just to build on that. So would you then be implying that the church fathers were all inspired and therefore you can follow what they teach as truth? They don't need to be inspired. What I do is I look at the scriptures, and this is why you need to open up your Bible so I can show you, that <clears throat> the Bible that you yourself quote says that the apostles entrusted the deposit of faith to their successors, and they would guard it by the Spirit 
and it would be their duty then pass it on to the successors after them. So they don't need to be inspired in order to be empowered by the spirit to preserve the very scriptures you're using against them and to also safeguard their inter interpretation of what those passages mean and do not mean. So if you want to go into scriptures, you want to bring up your screen, let's start the but, show. So, with but this. a statement that you said there, Sam, I wouldn't agree with because yeah, I would agree that go to the scriptures. disciples passed on, but if you're going to say you're holding the church fathers, well, you would, I sure hope would say that you're not saying all the church fathers were in complete agreement on everything. And no, I, would the agree, area, I think you'd agree with me that the prophets and the apostles, we would both agree are both inspired. Yeah. So my question I was asking again is if you're, if you're, you're going to say additional, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's not additional. To the church fathers, you would have to then be saying they're all inspired for you to be that for no. your authority. Now, do me a favor, Kelly. Don't straw man, steel man my position, and don't ignore my appeal to scriptures. It's ironic. I'm telling you go to scriptures, but you want to philosophize. But you so just you said you go to church fathers for your additional you authority. Go to 1 Timothy 3.15, so you're starting an argument. Can we what, go to the scriptures? Which scripture? 1 Timothy 3.15. I'm first going to Timothy scripture you want to philosophize. Isn't that ironic? And you hold the sola scriptura. So go to 1 Timothy 3.15. Okay. So it does go, not go follow ahead. what you said. You attack. Well, let me make my point, man. I try to let you speak. You attack right. strongman, steel man my position, and no, they don't have to be inspired <clears throat> the way the prophets and the apostles were in order to be empowered by the Spirit to safeguard the deposit of faith. I'm now going to appeal to scriptures because you believe in sola scriptura. Go to scriptures to see what the promise was by the Spirit. Sure. So I'm at First Timothy three fifteen, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Yes. Read it for me. So go ahead. Go ahead. Do you have it up? You want me to read, it or you want? Well, I'd like you to read it. Go for it. Okay, so then why did you bring it up if you when I said bring it up? So let me read it now. All right. Well, if you're gonna, I mean, if I if I ask someone but you've been following me, right? And you know that my patterns have people to read, but that's okay. I'll break the pattern well, for you. It's good for you to open your Bible once in a while too, Sam. <clears throat> so watch that cheap shot ad hominem. The guy who's well, playing nice. What it's just it? a common sense statement. It's okay. It's okay. You take cheap shots, I'm gonna go for your juggler sooner than later. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> okay, <buddy. laughs> All right, first Timothy 315. <laughs> anyway, you want to share your screen as I read it? No, go ahead. You can go. Okay. First Timothy 3.15 from, I believe, one of the Bibles you like, New American Standard Bible, 1995. But in case I'm delayed, I write so that you'll know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. So steel man my position. Don't straw man it. Now here, the truth that the church upholds <clears throat> would be the word of God, you'd say, right? You're asking me, sorry, the, 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 what, say it again, sorry? The truth that the church upholds, pillar upholds something, and the truth rests upon its foundation. You would say it's the word of God? Doesn't say that here directly, no, but I mean, that would be What's part of it for sure. What's the truth? What's the truth that it's supposed to uphold? Well, I mean, I'm answering your question, but I'm still waiting for you to explain how this is supposed to be pertaining to the church father. Can answer still so I can't answer it for you. Yeah. Um, which is the question. church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. I mean, the truth, um, I believe in the context is talking about Jesus Christ here because the previous verse is talking about him being, um, you know, our no, faith is in him. One. He's the one that came revealed in the flesh, vindicated by the spirit. So it's talking about him that's coming, taken six. on flesh, being resurrected, um, proclaimed. The, I mean, it's, it's, that's okay. the truth right there. Being proclaimed. Let me help you now, because again, you're tap dancing. That's okay. I'll tap. That's what the text says. No, because if you read verses one all the way, it's talking about the structure of the church and authority. But here, let me let me help you. First uh, Timothy four sixteen. Hopefully, we're not going to be doing tap dancing, Kelly. Not on my channel. First Timothy four sixteen. In case you missed it, let's go to the next chapter. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. So the teaching is only about Jesus Christ and not about everything else that attends salvation, like the structure of the church in 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 14. I hope you're not going to say that. Well, 1 Timothy 3 and 1 Timothy 4 are very different chapters of information. No, they're not. Paul there were no chapters. About. 1 Timothy no 3 chapters. has a lot to do with elders and deacons, deaconess and authority and structure, those who are overseers. Uh, yes. Then he starts getting into what Christ came to do, taking on flesh. Talking about the truth. No, that's not church. what he does. That's six. First Timothy four has a lot to do with Timothy being a young man. Instruction for really, young men. We're talking past each other. 
I'm, well, I'm just saying. So no, you didn't. Because there's there's, there's context to both these chapters, Sam. Fifteen is before sixteen. You just put sixteen before fifteen. Be consistent with your own contextual reading. Sixteen comes after fifteen. I don't it didn't come before mean. fifteen. What are you talking so about? So I'm going to go with you, and I'm going to ignore what comes after fifteen, like you did with chapter four. You're bearing yourself. Let's not play the game of chapter division because the early Greeks manuscripts did so not just, have chapter Maybe division. just prove to me how this proves this is the church father. That's all I'm asking. No, I don't need to prove that church fathers. I said, steel man my position. I'm proving that the scriptures and their interpretation was given to the body of believers who would be <clears throat> led by bishops appointed by the apostles. So I'm going to ask you, historically, prior to the Reformation, what was that church? Who were these church men and bishops who could trace themselves to the apostles? Who were they so, and how did they interpret I'm not Matthew? I'm trying not to be rude, but I mean, you're, so you're not going to really answer the question that I've asked you that you said you okay, could? Here. You want to take a, the poll that I just answered you and you're not listening? So you didn't you answer the church fathers thing. I've asked you that numerous times now. You still haven't answered it. Kelly, let me try it again because I know what you're trying to do. Play the victim. You're not going to work with me. You're staying. I'm just going me. off what the text says right now. Nothing says again. anything you just said. You're talking over me. Guys, you see, the guy who's a nice guy is being a jerk because he wants to egg me on. Listen to my response, Kelly. Listen, pretend, because everyone got my answer, but I know you're over your head. So let's try this again. Uh, what I'm showing you from 1 Timothy 3.15, and I'm going to show you from 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14, and 2, verses 1 to 2, is that the truth, however you want to define it, Jesus and the revelation of Christ, was given to the church that would be <clears throat> led by bishops filled with the spirit, the same spirit that filled the apostles to safeguard it. So I want to know what that church was for the first 300 to 400 years, what it looked like, how do they interpret Matthew 125? How do they interpret Mark 6, 3? That's what we want to go into, but you're doing the tap dance. So now can I read 2 Timothy 1, 13, 14 for you as well? You can read whatever you want. I'm still just waiting for the answer that I've asked. So go ahead. All right, guys. You see the he's he's playing games here. Listen, I hope you're not being a narcissist. I'm trying to give you respect. That's what narcissists do, gaslighting. Doesn't I just work. want to get eventually to discussion about Mariology. That's why I was my here. question. What was the church in the second century, third century, fourth century that was the pillar and foundation of the church? Now answer my question. So in first Timothy three fifteen, I'll read the scripture again that you're you're attempting Make sure you to answer my try. question. Though. Huh? Make sure you answer my question. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read what the text actually says and not what you want it to say. But in case I am delayed, I write that? so that you will know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. So the household of God is a general term for the church in general. What is that? The church I didn't of the living God. I'm still talking. The pillar and support of the truth. So what the church, the church are the people who have come to know Jesus Christ and in general. Second, third, fourth century. They are proclaimers of Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and life. He is the one who came and revealed grace and truth, John 1, 17. He Don't came preach. and revealed it's the Father's will, John church. 17, that thy word is truth. So Kelly, truth we're not has a preach. lot of application. Answer my but question. To try to force this text, to try to make it talk about here's church here's father. You remember when you did that to me? Remember when they did that to me? Kelly, answer my question. You're not here to preach. You're not an authority. Name me who those body of believers were in the second, third, fourth centuries. Let's see if you're going to answer. So you did that to me. I'm doing it to you because you're talking past me. I know you're scared. Answer I'm my question. Not scared of you at all, my friend. You don't answer you the, the question all the time. I'm not afraid of you at all. Okay, answer the question. So what's your question now? The third time, the body of believers who proclaim Jesus Christ identify them for me in the first, second, third, fourth centuries. Catholic, the, the, the early on with the first few centuries, the term Catholic was a universal word. That's for, not my question. For, for believers. Do you want me to answer? Do you want that's, to keep no, cutting me because off? That's not, I didn't say Catholic or Orthodox. So I'm answering your people. question. Do you want me to answer? Do you want to keep cutting me no, off? No, I don't want you to straw man it. So then let me answer the question. Okay, don't tell me about Catholic. I'm going to ask you about that. Get to the fathers. Name them for So me. you're going to let me answer your question. You're going to keep cutting me off. Get to the answer, Kelly. Stop playing victim. How about you give me 30 seconds or so, ahead, and then you can talk. Okay, good. How's that? Good. So the first few centuries, of course, people like Polycarp or Clement or other people would have been first-hand eyewitnesses uh, and disciples uh, of the apostles. 
And of course, they would have been passing on things that they would have got early on. And the first few centuries, yes, there was many different people within that those few centuries that would have been Christians uh, who would have been spreading the word. However, I find nothing in any of the church fathers that claim any divine authority or any inspiration of their teachings. They're just like denominations today. Many people had different opinions. Many people had different opinions. Some of them had lots of the same opinions. But to say that's your authority, well, then you're going to be basically doing church father buffet. You pick and choose the ones you want. You don't, you throw out the rest. Okay, you're now ready for me to respond to your straw man again? Because you can't even steel man my position. So I'm glad you mentioned Polycarp. Remind me what steel man means. I don't, I forgot what that means. It means try to make, when you're representing your enemy or your opponent, not enemy, too strong language, represent his position as he would, and then knock it down, not caricature it. I'm glad you mentioned Polycarp. And notice what you said, church father buffet. Okay, so now I'm going to call you out on this. Did the church fathers disagree on water baptismal regeneration? Can you show me any dissenting voice from Polycarp, Ignatius, to Epistle of Barnabas, to Irenaeus, Justin Martyr, where they denied water baptismal regeneration? Because you said Bible buffet. Let's see. Let's see how much you know. They, they, they did affirm that. Many of them did. Yes, absolutely. No, not many. Show me. One I don't know did. all of them. I haven't read all the writings, so but I you can't say 100%. Them. No, but you just attacked them. You just said, yeah, it's like a buffet. So why would you attack people you haven't studied? They didn't all have the same views and everything. That's my whole point. That's common sense. Now. No, no. See, again, you're attacking Starman. So how about we just get to okay, Mariology? Hold on. Let me make, well, let me make the point. I don't want you to run. Water I'm baptismal not running. regeneration. Okay. Can I make my point? Water baptismal regeneration is a salvific doctrine. You just said in part of your definition that this church is the body of believers who trusted in Jesus Christ and presented the gospel. Universally, the people you mentioned taught that water baptismal regeneration hmm. is the means through which you receive the saving benefits of Christ. Were they right? Were they wrong? I wouldn't agree with them if that's what they taught for sure. Okay. I don't care. Any other reason you, why I don't, right? Is that damnable heresy? Is what heresy? Water baptismal regeneration. Believing it's essential for salvation? Yeah. If a person tries to force that, I would consider that another gospel. As Paul sent, I was sent to preach the gospel, not to water baptize. Okay. Let's try it again. You didn't answer my question. The whole but church. See, well, you're, you're, you're accusing me of tap dancing. Now you're going to a different topic. No, no, I could ask you, where did any of those guys teach Mariology was essential for salvation? You were going to get to Mariology in a minute. No, no, but essential know, for like, salvation. Cut me off again. So now you want to cut me off? I gave you 30 seconds. Sure. Let me now bury that argument of yours. No church father denied that water baptism was necessary for regeneration. In fact, it's in your Nicene Creed. Do you recite the Nicene Creed or you do? I do not. Oh, so you're one of those that poo poo it. Okay. So let's try again. I want to repeat what you said. If someone forces water baptism or regeneration, it's a false gospel. Guys, I want you to clip this. He just said to a T, the successors of the apostles, he doesn't know he said it because he doesn't think deeply enough. They taught a false gospel because not one of them from Irenaeus, who is a disciple of Polycarp, a disciple of John, denied water baptism or regeneration and he says did if they, they force it on you, you question did they explicitly oh, say in all their writings that yes it's in that the was the Creed. only way to be saved or did they talk about faith in jesus was there other ways to be saved or was that the final icing on the cake? let's go to the marian doctrines this is above no no faith. but let's stay on there for a second because you're oh. trying to force something that's there that is no it I is recognize there. they did no, teach no it's there i recognize that but did they say that was the final way a person would be saved or is that the way that Someone gets into the church. That's not that, sir. Yeah. No, they said that you need to be baptized in yeah. water for the spirit to come upon you, make you born again and unite to you to Christ for forgiveness of sins. Hmm. I kept saying so it. Not was, was Peter wrong when he preached the gospel to Cornelius and they received the spirit and they weren't water baptized yet? You mean in the 10? Same Peter in Acts 2.38? And no, in Acts 2, 10, Peter preached the gospel. But Acts they received the Holy Spirit and they weren't water baptized yet. What happened there? Can you go to Acts 2, 37, 38? No, no, Let's no, go no, no. You, just hold on. You I'm want me to answer question. your question? What about those guys? Oh, because um, you just said someone can't receive the spirit. Okay. Do you want to keep talking over me? You don't think I'm aware of the Acts 10, 43 to 48? This is what you're doing, Kelly. Gaslighting so you can play victim. Let's try it again. Let's play your game. You remember what I did with 1 Timothy 3, 15, and you went to context? 
when Peter first preached, he didn't start in Acts 10. He started in Acts 2, 37, 38. Mm -hmm. And I will school you on these passages. Acts 2, 37, 38. Acts 15, 7 to 11. Acts 16, 30, 31. I know where you're going. Calm down. Don't be intimidated. Yeah. Let's go know. Let's do your way of interpreting the Bible and butcher the way you do. Acts 2, 37, 38. Did Peter mean what he meant when he said, <clears throat> repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Did he mean yes. that? Yes, he did. So you believe that you need to repent and be baptized? Yeah. Good. Now in Acts 10, the passage that you misquoted, why did Peter not first mention to believe and get baptized? Because God, who is free in his sovereign goodness, like the thief on the cross, God who is free can bestow the gift of the Holy Spirit before baptism. But I want to ask you, why then did he have them go on and get baptized immediately afterwards? That's, that's a commandment. 10. We're supposed to be baptized. That's what Jesus taught. Okay. So now let's go back to the church fathers that you ran from. Now, before you, you move on, can I ask you a question on what you've asked? Yes. So I agree with Acts 2.38. No, you don't. Well, that's just, just false accusation of you there. No, you don't. Uh, you don't Acts believe 10, you just quoted here. Acts 15, which is hilarious because 7 through 11 refutes what you just claimed. Because mentions it? nothing about sure? them being justified or sanctified or anything. Just mention them you believing sure? in Jesus. But it's interesting. In 1 Peter 3.21, Peter says, baptism now saves you. Yeah, you must very... be right, Sam. We, I, 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 I must go eat crow. No, finish it. But Read notice it. Peter yeah, says something. He says, not the removal of dirt from the flesh. That word right. not is a big word. He says, but a clean conscience towards right. God through the resurrection. So the baptism that doesn't save us is the water. No, you're Baptism wrong. Baptism that does save us no. is the inward, that of the heart. No, you're wrong. You just distorted the text in my presence, and I'm going to bury your eyes. Sure, Jesus. go for it. First Peter 3. You're wrong again. That's what happens when yeah. you're a Protestant and you All think right. you're well, scripture. Oh, let me hold on. Let me bury your burial of that passage. All right. Well, you you, you you bury me here because it's can not I read fun. One? Listen, don't gaslight. I know you're trying to play the <laughs> <laughs> text says what it says, buddy. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you what it says because you don't understand, just like you don't understand the fathers, what I said, you don't understand the text. Here it is, guys. Let's walk through this. Let's walk through this. All right. Who well, once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons were brought safely through the water, safely through the water corresponding to that baptism now saves you. The water corresponds to baptism, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Only someone who reads a passage simply like a simpleton, and I'm trying to be respectful, doesn't understand what Peter's saying is that the water baptism isn't like a bath that cleanses you of dirt. This water baptism is what regenerates you because it's made efficacious by the resurrection of Christ. Only a simpleton would misread this to deny the salvific power of water. When he just said water, the flood water, corresponds to this water baptism, which does more than just remove dirt, but it makes you alive because the resurrection of Christ makes it efficacious. What's next? Well, what's interesting here, is when you're reading the text, I agree with what the text says. He says baptism saves you, but he says not the removal of the dirt from the flesh. What is the removal of the dirt from the flesh? Like when you take a bath and you're out in a dusty bath. It's a physical like... baptism. What? It's a physical baptism. No, he's saying the physical act of baptism cleanses you spiritually because of he the resurrection. He does not say that. Baptism say that now though. saves you. How does it save you? It says here an appeal to God. For does that appeal a save good you? conscience through the resurrection that of Jesus. You? That's the inward, not the outward. Does that the appeal save says you? The baptism that saves us is not the physical outward. It's the inward, that of the heart. Does that appeal save you? What's that? Does that appeal save you? If the person is believing truly in Christ, then the answer is yes. So thank you for now bearing yourself again because that confession of a clear conscience before God is connected with baptism so if that confession saves you but if you revert back to the word save save is tied in with baptism not just the clear conscience of a confession before god 
So hmm. deal with baptism now saves you. How does baptism save you? So in the Jewish concept, I'm assuming with all your knowledge that you have, Sam, you've done research with Judaism prior to John the Baptist. Well, now we, prior guys, to you know, Jesus, you abandon the scriptures. With what's now, the called the mikvah. What do you know about a Jewish mikvah? Yes, they would perform ritual bathing. This was a custom found even among the Essenes where they would do ritual bathing. But before you go on, hold on. Guys, you notice when he can't deal with Sola Scriptura, he runs to outside sources. When I run to outside sources, he runs back to Scripture. So what Jewish do you want to do? Jewish is inside the Bible. When we come back to the church. Because no, you, no, no. you ran Jewish from the Mikvah church. is Old Testament. So okay. we what come did back they do church? in the Old Testament? Exodus 29. What did it do? Exodus 29 and 30, the priest would be bathed in water and have themselves anointed for their priestly office. But can we go back to the church? Because you know, you went I'm, I'm, far I'm kind of, Can I make one quick point before you um, move on here? Yeah. You, and I, I use the word, I, I, I use the word assume. I assume you would have certain views that we should have in common agreement here. I don't know if we do. You're, well, you're so Jesus heretical. Jesus is a Jew. The Christianity is Jewish. He's a Jewish Messiah. And prior to John the Baptist and Jesus coming, they had what's called tevila, which is Hebrew for immersion. And a mikvah, both then and even today, represents when a Jewish person will go into a body of living water. There's different kinds they do, but ceremonies, but still, this is the same. They go into a body of living water. It represents going un complete immersion, right? Dying to their old self, coming up out of the water to a newness of life. And they call that in Judaism, new birth. So... Knowing this of the Jewish faith, when Peter talks about this, that we go being baptized into Christ, as Paul says in Romans 6, we're being baptized into his death and this newness of life coming to the resurrection. So this whole thing, yeah. even though we do the physical act outwardly, it's the inward that God looks at. That's what saves us. Now, let me repeat what you said. You ready? Guys, did you hear him? It's recorded. He said the Jews believed when he went into the body, water came out. <clears throat> that you were made a new creation. I didn't say that. I said yeah, they would what say said. it was like what a new happened? birth. It was a fresh start. What is a new birth if not new creation? They didn't have the same concept as us, my friend. Okay. New birth for them okay. meant for the a rest new of you, life. And I make my point, I'll let you speak, yeah. right? For you the should rest know that, you. Sam. You should know that in all your research. Keep the autonomous so I can go for your juggler to show people well, that you're, you're not missing every time. Keep trying. Calm down. I know you're getting animated, gaslighting. Do you guys hear? New birth. Uh, last time I checked, the new birth is equated with new creation in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But let's put that aside. Let's use his terminology. He just said when they went into the water, came out, it was a new birth. They were born again. No, the very that's not what I said, Sam. That's not what I said. So did you not just say right now, less than a minute ago, they went into the water and came out, and it was a new birth. That's what they believed. I said for them, it's like what we call a new birth. They call like. it a new birth. No, you didn't say and like. for them, it's a fresh start. No, you got caught they in are dying to their old ways. Dying. And now wanting to follow Yahweh. Okay, now, you just got caught in a lie. You didn't say like. Now that I pressed you, you qualified it. So now, can you what stop? What I'm trying to share, I maybe didn't say all the words, but that's what the view is. Hey guys, you can let, twist my words let, all you want, Sam. You just admit you didn't use his words. Guys, you see when he gets buried, he then does a thousand qualifications. But now, yet, what everything I just said is biblical, my friend. You I, can't refute it. I'm not it. talking to you. I'm not doing it for you, for them. You want me to continue schooling this guy or should we send him packing? Because this is above his pay grade. That's why I say he's not that intelligent to deal with these issues. Can but I ask just you one question before you boot me, oh, Sam? No, you ask too many questions. You haven't answered mine. Be patient. Be it's patient. supposed to be a Mariology. Yeah, but I have, I have one it, question it, oh, I would oh, just see, like to answer. Maybe we can go in this again. direction if it's okay. You're talking over me. Who made it about church and my authority? See, this is why it's recorded. I jumped with you. Unlike you, I followed your rabbit trail. Rewind and see. You asked me, what is my authority that got us here? So let me walk you on a path because I know maybe you forgot what you said. What's my authority? I said I'm still church. waiting for you to prove it from the Bible. Yeah, you still haven't done that yet. First Peter 3, 21, which you could not refute. So now what do you want to talk about? Because you're a kid. What's the next subject you want to talk about? What is your definition of worship? <clears throat> Depending what you how mean. Do you, how do you define worship for a person worships God? What, what does that look like? What are different ways a person worships God? 
that's very difficult because the same terms used for the worship of God is used for others, like proskeneo ishtichava. You're aware of this, or do I have sure. to walk? I'm, I'm just I'm asking you where you're at. I, I know yeah, that's the variance. Yes. Bowing down to someone besides mm -hmm. God is allowed. <clears throat> what will be something directly to God alone, though? That kind of stuff. Well, in the Old Testament cult, it would have been animal sacrifices. That's only to be given to God. That was the definitional distinguishing characteristic of worship in the Old Testament as well in the second time, because you were mocking me. I should know this. You should know this too, that in second temple period Judaism, the definitional act of worship that could not be given to someone else was sacrifices to God. Okay. What's next? Well, the reason why I'm asking, you know, I'm still, I'm still not even clear on your answer. Um, I'm asking you to define for you personally, how, 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 for you, different ways, personal right now. This is Sam Shimon. What are different ways you worship God? Worship God that acknowledge that he's the only creator, sustainer, life giver, and savior, and that my life belongs to him, and I look to him to preserve me. Okay. So just say in mere words, I'm asking, like, what do you do in your life for you, okay. how you worship God? Forget about me. It's not important. I follow the scriptures. Let's get to the meat of the matter. Stop diverting. Let's get to Mary. So Come on. So you can't answer the question it's a, for yourself? Excuse me, I'm not answering again. I'm really going to take off the gloves and go after you because I'm going to ask you, what is the definitional aspect of worship exclusive to God according to the Bible that you can't give to someone else? Well, Name you it said you're to worship God alone. Um, Matthew 4, What's the 10, word for correctly. worship that he said alone? So what? we're to worship God alone to give him What's our... The word? What? What's the word? Because you misquoted it. I know what you're saying. Matthew 4, 10, Luke 4, 8. This is again. I misquoted it. What did I misquote? You, okay. What is the word? What did I misquote? Matthew 4, 10 and Luke 4, 8. Because that's the only place where Jesus says, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You misquoted yeah, I did, it. I didn't finish my statement, so I didn't quote it wrong. Okay. What's the word for worship? I, off the top of my head, I don't remember that word right now. Look it up, because this is going to be your burial. Look it, it up. doesn't matter. Just what I'm, what I'm, I'm sharing with you, you right now, Paul the word says. For worship? Paul says in Romans 12 that uh, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, which is your act of your spiritual worship. What's the so word how for do we as Christians live out yeah, our daily like lives that. following the Lord the with a spiritual act of worship? So here we go. Kelly, I want to ask you one more time. What's the word for worship in Romans 12, verse 1? You don't know because I know what the word is. Just tell me. What is Look it up on your lexicon. I'm not going to look it up right now. I'm just trying no, to have I'm a conversation not, no, no, with you. Not, you've come here to have a discussion. You better look it up. Look it up. Why don't you just tell me? Kelly, stop playing games. Romans 12. You what is are the word something for else, man. Can you open up your lexical source and do it for me? I'm going to look it up for you because you are just some kind of special. You are. Not as special as you. Special with your beautiful hair. No, you, you've got me beat by a lot. Man, no, your okay. hair is off out of this world. But go ahead, read it for me. All right, just for you. Now, guys, yes, watch how, Kuno. Kuno. As you go Kuno. Watch how, how watch how he's going to dig the hole deeper for himself. Watch. So that's Matthew 4.10, so sure. So Proskuno, yeah? No, no, the other word that he says only. What's the other word you want me to see? It's right in front of you, right? You shall worship Which the Lord word? God and worship the Lord God and what? Serve. Yeah, what's that word? Uh, Latreo. Exactly. And what's the okay. word in Romans 12, 1? Uh, I'll go look it up for you because you're such an amazing guy. Yes, and you are wonderful, gorgeous. Go ahead. Romans 12, 1. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a different in the King James here. It's a reasonable service. I guess I'll have to look that. It's a little different there. My apology. That up over here. That is the word, am I correct, Latreia? Yeah, Latreia, right? Okay, okay. So now I've done what you asked. So now I'm asking the question, how do we live out our lives as a spiritual act of worship? What does that look can like? Can I answer you now? Yeah, that's my question I asked you a minute ago. No, don't cut me off so I can answer. First, your question was, you said, worship God alone. That's what Jesus said. No, he didn't. The word proskeneo is used elsewhere for the reverence you give to creatures besides God. For example... First Chronicles 29, 20, it says that Israel bowed down, Yishti Chava, 
Shacha, which in the Greek is proskunia, to Yahweh and the king, and which in that context is David. So because you don't know the Bible, this is what you keep doing. You put scripture against scripture. You now have God allowing David to receive that worship that you said belongs to God alone alongside of God. This is what you do. What Jesus said, which is if you actually studied the catechism as you claim, he says that latreia or latruo is to be given to God alone. Now, let me answer Romans 12.1. The way I offer myself in latruo to God alone is to do what he requires of me. But ironically, the very God requires of me to show honor and reverence to others in the body of Christ. See, that's why I say this is above your pay grade. Can you show me Revelation 3, 9? Why does Jesus oh, before say? Before we move on, I want to stay with these two texts ahead, yeah. and respond to what you just said. So, as I was mentioning a moment ago, Matthew 4, 10 states, well, actually, first 9, the devil's talking to him, says, I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Mm -hmm. So what I was asking a minute ago is what was the definition of how, for yourself, what it means in your life to worship God. That was my first question. And then my second question that was from Romans was asking like how in your daily life do you, Sam Shimon, I'll make it a, my, act, my, my do my acts of your worship. That's what I was asking. That's, that's all I was I'm asking for you. you in your life. I repeat my asking answer. you how you live it out. Repeat my answer. Cause I answered you. You did not answer what I asked. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Romans 12, 1, I answered you. It's being no, recorded. Not my question, though. You may have answered what you think you answered. Kelly, get to the Marian doctrine. Stop your tap dance. I know you're scared. Get to Marian. So, Latreya, from, from you just said the wild, it's to God yes. alone, right? Is that what mm -hmm. you said? Mm -hmm. What does that look like, Latreya? How how do we serve Very God easy. only? Yeah, because Latruo is the term used for the liturgical worship given in the temple cultus. It's the Greek translation of Pilach. And if you see how Pilach is used in Ezra, it refers to the sacrificial system in the temple where sacrifices were given to God alone. That's why in Revelation 20, verse 6, we're told that God and Christ have priests serving them. So this is what Latro is. It is the type of sacrificial worship only God receives. Any other term you quote, you'll find in the Bible, Old and New Testaments, that type of reverence is given to creatures. This is why I said Revelation 3, 9. But again, you wanted to stick on these two passages. Revelation 3, 9, that word proskuneo is used by Jesus for the Jews being brought before the feet of Christ so they can proskuneo before their feet. So are you telling me that Jesus is having them worship the church as they worship God? Revelation 3, 9? Of course not. Just like how no, wait, no, 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 Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You, you, you got to let me be able to respond to you. Come on. No, for a second. That's not hold fair. Hold on. Let me make my point because well, you then make your said, point, then let me talk. Okay. Let, no, I didn't finish my point. Okay. You said earlier, you said earlier, this recorded, so I want people to make a snippet out of this, that Jesus and Matthew said to worship God alone, and that word is proskuneo. Now when I told you, since proskuneo is given before the feet of the church, does that mean worshiping God? Of course not. So how did the definition change, Kelly? Context. Thank, oh, talk about bearing yourself. Excellent. Now let's well, go to the marriage. Well, so conference. may I talk now? Go ahead. So I'll use an example of what I'm trying to share. Context now. Keep that Scripture in mind. Scripture is always interpreted by its proper context. As you were butchering 1 Timothy 3 and 4 earlier, trying to make that be about church fathers. Yeah, I should had about literally that. nothing about that. that. Um, what I was asking a moment ago, you didn't still didn't respond properly for yourself. I was asking you a personal Buddy, question how you live it out. You still didn't answer that. You are gaslighting and running. So Second Corinthians 4.4 4 talks about Satan being called the God of this world. In the Greek, no, it, it is hotheos, the same no, that would be from John 20.28. 20, no, it isn't. So hold on, hold on. Let me finish, please. Be right, be fair. All I'm saying is, yeah, you can point to the same words, but everything has context. So okay. when I'm asking you, and I asked it, you, you need to listen. I asked you, what kind of worship do we give to God alone? That's what I asked you. Not for other people that can be homage or bowing down or giving reverence and some kind of respect. I asked specifically, what kind of worship do we give to God alone? And you still have an answer what that is. Now, Kelly, now let me just tell people 
what you just did again. Guys, and Archive, I want you to make snippets out of this. We're going to make this guy Make famous. lots of snippets, please. Okay, now, can I finish? Because I'll let you well, talk. I don't know. I'm still waiting for the answer. Okay. Kelly, I know as a narcissist, you're gaslighting. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to put <clears throat> gas to your light in a minute. You first said, you got buried. You first said that Jesus said, worship God alone. Proskuneo. When you got buried and showed that proskuneo is used for others, oh, it's now magically context. Exactly. Now, secondly, I know you didn't, didn't hear. I just said that the worship I give to God, Romans 12, 1, is to offer my body as a sacrifice. And how do you do that? By obeying his commands. Now, pretend you're listening. And part of those commands entails that I revere servants that God has exalted and worked through. Did you get my answer? Now, can we get to Mary? Well, that answers more than what you said a minute ago, because I don't remember you saying all oh, that I said before. that in the first place. Can we get to Mary, dude? Okay. So in the Bible, you, you're you're the Bible expert here. I'm the Bible butcher. And by the way, you didn't answer I'm, my I'm question. I'm the guy that doesn't know the Bible or doesn't know how to no, debate. You I'm arrogant, really, prideful, and all that stuff that you said. Really, you, before we move on, why didn't you answer my question? I said, what kind of worship you give to God that you don't give to someone else because the terms you're using are used for someone else. So I want to flip it on you. Sure. In what way so, do you worship God alone that you don't worship someone else because don't appeal to the terms? Well, sure. So when John fell down before the angel in Revelation 19, the angels picked him up right away and said, hey, what are you doing? Um, we give certain reverence and um, worship to the Lord alone, who is the almighty, the uncreated, the eternal, uh, all holy, um, that we don't give that to any creature or human. Um, and, and we don't pray to saints or Mary. And so this is something that I would say is probably one of the biggest differences for where I'm coming from, where you're at. And so my third question to you is, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let, no, this, no, this, no, let me finish my statement. I'm, this is following up. Don't ask a As question. I've asked you, you about said. your authority outside yeah. the Bible. Yeah. You answered, but you know, I'll give it to you. Your answer. I then asked the question of what it means to worship God and in, in, in our way of worshiping God. My follow up to that now is when we read scripture, because this is about Mariology now. This is getting to the question. Why do we? Why do you pray to Mary when in the Bible we are? I could, you know, you know this quotes. We pray to God, call upon God, talk to the Father, talk to Jesus. Um, that's what we see in Scripture. Why do you have the feeling or the need or the belief that this is something that we are supposed to do to pray to Mary? Now, Kelly, I was about to respond to that, but I'm glad you brought it up. Now, let me repeat what you said. You went to Revelation 19.10. It's also repeated in 22, 8 to 9, where there he bowed down before the angel. And we're not supposed to do that. We do it to God. Do you know what that word is again? I'm going to assume it's the same word. Proskuneo. Okay. So now you just put pit revelation against itself. Now let me answer you because you brought up prayer. You brought up worship. Let me deal with it. I'm, I'm letting you go for it. The material's there for You're you. You're great. Okay, can I get to the point? I was trying the to encourage you. Go ahead. The same proskuneo that the angel refused is given to the church in Revelation 3.9. So are you saying that God is contradicting himself because whereas the angel refused the proskuneo of John, the church will be given to it as a sign that Jesus loves the church, Revelation 3, 9. So are you now contradicting scripture, pitting scripture against scripture? So in you're saying Revelation Context. 3, 9? Yes. What's the word there? Yeah, I think you just said it a little while ago, proskuneo, right? Now you're going to say context. Okay, good. I'm glad. So the, ver the verse says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which they say are Jews, are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. Does it say that they're going to be worshiping people or just worship by, the, by, you know, by Why are they uh, worshiping before the their feet? feet? It's answered right there from Jesus himself. Yeah, I'm but they're not worshiping Jesus. the church, not worshiping Christians, are they? Yes, because the text says, if you let me finish, that I'm going to make them worship at your feet because this will be a sign that I love you when I make them do that to you. That's the context. Finish it. Why is he doing it? So they will know that I love you. But you want to get out of that one too, right? No, I'm not getting out of it anyway. I'm just saying like everything has proper context. That's all I'm trying to say oh, with you. So, so before you go to the context argument, 
Right. So I, I believe you're you're the Bible, but you're here because okay. when it says Let here, I will this. make them come and worship before thy feet. It's not saying they're going to come and worship Finish the church it. or the Christians. It just they're going to come it. and worship before their feet. Finish Who are they it. worshiping? They're not worshiping Finish the Christians it. here. To read into that, it's called Isa Jesus. Wait. If I have to tell you to finish it the fifth time, you are a coward and you're like the devil butchering the scripture. Finish it. You stop. Finish it. What do you mean? Like read the next verse? You, the, It's one sentence. Finish why they're going to do that. And to know that I have loved thee. So why is he going to make them bow before their feet in worship? Yeah. So they'll know and that I love thee. But it still doesn't say that they're worshiping no, Christians or the church. That's because you're butchering scripture like you did the rest. Now I'm reading it for what it says, my friend. Isaiah 60, verse 14. What is that word used there when God is going to make the nations bow down before the souls of Israel? Isaiah 60, verse 14. You want me to go look that up now too? No, if you want, I can get my cat to do it for you. Go ahead. Isaiah 60, verse 14. He might he might be able to interpret it better than you. Like you might, what, that might be a good idea. Oh, well, he's going to school you. Go ahead. Well, Isaiah what? Isaiah 60, verse 14. 60, 14. Isaiah 60, 14. All right. It says the following. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and they that, are, and they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Do I really need to show you what the context is? Because that's what you like to do. You like to avoid answering. You know, the context so, is. What so are you telling me that this is where they're bowing down? They're actually worshiping people. Do you know what the word is for bow down? Well, it's definitely not proskuno because that's a uh, Hebrew there. No, because it's shacha, which is a term that's often rendered as proskuno, like in first Chronicles 29, 20. Sure. Nope. I'm, I'm good with that. The problem is though, are you trying to imply that this means that the people were being worshiped like God? No, because you see Kelly, you're not listening to yourself. This is the problem. Everyone catches it. You have a narrow definition of worship, which is why you don't get it. This is why I say this is above your pray grade. You keep defining worship in a narrow sense where it's only for God. And I'm telling you, you need to change your definition because you're butchering the scripture with your narrow definition. Okay. So you don't get it. And I can't so, make but you You're speak. telling me, if I understand you correctly, Sam, that people can be worshipped just like God is worshipped? Did I say as God is worship? Thank you for strawmanning. See, this is That's about what I've you. asked you from the whole. You start. want to bring? Maybe you can bring someone to actually do this debate because this is honestly you're not qualified. Because so where did I why say? Why do you pray to Mary? Can you answer that? Because I ask her to pray for me. Why? Because the Bible says that's what saints do for one another. Where does it say that we are to pray to Mary? Does it need to say it in those exact words? You sure? Say I'm I want asking, to see. There's there's uh, a lot of prayers. Yes. Specifically to Mary mm. from Orthodox. Okay. From Catholics. There's one called Akathist uh, hymn. There's another one called Litany, the Blessed Virgin. And in those prayers, they pray directly to Mary. Sure. Saying that they consecrate themselves wholly to Mary to give their full hearts, their minds, their ways, fully devoted to them to serve her fully. And when they're praying to her, they're even asking her to heal them, forgive them of their sins at times, to lead and guide her, sorry, lead and guide them. It almost sounds like Mary's been turned into the Holy Spirit. Okay. So do you want me to answer the initial question? Because look what you like to do. You went into the early church history and the way they prayed, and you butchered every one of those statements which i will address why just my now, question what do you want to ask you is why do you pray to mary because <clears throat> she prays for us as all believers do so i can ask her intercession she prays for you but why do you pray to her now kelly this is such an embarrassing statement in my article i posted the definition for pray what does pray mean see you're embarrassing yourself kelly what does pray mean english and greek Prayer you, is a way of let communication me, let me help between you. us to okay, God. Wait, let me help you. Here, let me help you. I'm going to give you this link, which I wrote in your honor, because I knew you are going to make this stupid argument. So here it is. We're well, I'm private. asking again, like, okay, hold on. Can in the I Bible, we're told to pray to God. Do we have any places where we're told what we can pray to, pray pray to anyone? Talking over me is not going to help you. What does the word pray even in English mean? You want me to give you dictionary.com? Then we're going to sure, look at the you help words. me out. 
And then we're going to look at the Greek words, which you don't know what the words are. I'm still just wanting to ask a question. You, what we, are the that's Greek where words? I want to go. Okay. What are the Greek words for pray? Do you know? I don't know all the words, but I know what prayer is. Prayer is between us but prayer and is an praying English translation. to God. No, that's, it's not. That's, that's the best way to do it. Buddy, we're it's not. To God. Even dictionary.com says you're a liar. Here it is. Dictionary. Yeah, what's it say? Here, let me get it for you. Hold on. Dictionary.com and then the thesaurus. So one more time, I'm going to ask you as I show you that. Just tell me what the, the tell me can what the dictionary wait? says. Can you wait? Calm down. I know you're nervous. It's above your. Well, I know That's you want to bounce me at any minute here, so I'm just trying to get in before you kick me out. Relax. Let me show you dictionary.com. Even the English term right here. It shows that you have no idea what you're talking about. Here it is. Are you ready? Uh huh. Dictionary.com. And then it says, check the thesaurus. Now, let's see if prayer means only prayer to God. Okay, let's see. It's what you said. Oh. And we're going to run to the Greek words. Verb, used with object to offer devout petition, praise, thanks, etc. To God or an object of worship, idolatry, to offer prayer, to bring, put, etc. By praying, to pray a soul into heaven. Make earnest petition to a person. Make earnest petition to a person. Verb. Use without object to make entreaty or supplication as to a person or for a thing. Where did you get that prayer only means praying to God? Well, I was going off of what we normally look and what, uh, you know, we want to go by. Not an Where did you get that? The Bible talks about. So now, you just went to dictionary.com, right? Give me the Greek words for prayer. Let's stop just this. Chill out for a second. I want to go read what you just gave me from dictionary.com. And then I, the I'm, I'm doing. Well. I'm being a good Berean here. All right. So here it says Repent. a devotion, petition to God, or an act of worship. You just read this. I'm going to read it out loud myself. Okay. A spiritual communion with God or an object of worship. And I liked how you put in there, um, uh, you know, idolatry. That was pretty good on your part. So besides God. If you As in supplication, God. thanksgiving, adoration, or confession. The act or practice of praying to God or an object of worship. So that's that idolatry thing there, which would be praying to statues and other things like that. A formula or sequence of words used or pointed for praying. And it says Lord's Prayer, which we would, that would have agreed. Prayers, religious observance, either public or private, consisting wholly or mainly of prayer. So here, this goes exactly what I just talked about. It's Can talking you about praying to God. It's can you finish to the God. definition? That's exactly Kelly. what I just said a moment ago. Kelly, can you finish the definition? I gave what did you I the... miss? Read it. What does it say? To make entreaty something as to a person or a thing. When you entreat someone, it's not just prayer to God. Did you forget that part? Oh, I only had up to, uh, sorry, it only showed up to five. So let me keep uh, going. Say it again. What was that? That which is prayed How for, convenient. a petition, a section. Bill, equity. What are you talking about? Okay, buddy, one more time. Where are you at? What are you reading from? Dictionary.com. That's what here I'm looking is. at right now, buddy. I don't know what, what you're you reading. It's in front here. Okay, here. Let me now call out your lie. Okay, guys, wait. Coward won't put it on the screen. Let me see if he read it. There you go. Okay. You want me to share a screen real quick? I can show you. Go ahead. Yes, show it to me. Let's let's do what you're just talking about. So this yes, is what I, is this what I'm reading here? Yes. Open it up now. Dictionary.com. Enlarge it, there. Kelly. Enlarge it, Kelly. All right. And then we're going to go to the source because it tells you go to the source. This is still. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll get to you in a minute. Just okay. Whatever that is over okay. there. Hey, at least it's not too bad. So what am I reading now that I didn't quote before? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't see. You got to enlarge it, buddy. It's enlarged. No, that's not. Okay. You need bigger? You need glasses, buddy. No, really? That's your problem. You now I understand out? why. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Here, Is that big enough? What number do you need to read? Uh, yeah. All right. Now, notice what he did. Did you what click on this link? What did wait, 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 wait. Did you click on the... Stop talking over me, dude. Did you click on this link? Now, talk about... I'm glad. Glory to God. It this says dictionary.com. Buddy, I gave you the link that I was quoting from. But guys, I want you to see what kind of deceiver this guy is. Ooh. Did you guys see? Well, hold on. Did you see yeah. I gave this link, right? You guys saw this, right? I put it on the screen. Put the link again, Sam. I must have missed it. Click Let's on that. What, you got. what a wicked deceiver, dude. Thank God you're exposing yourself for all to see. Click on it. You wicked. You're hilarious. You're acting like a Mohammedan. Shame on you're you, hilarious. man. In the name of Christ. So I okay. had the word prayer. You have the word yeah. prayer. Pray. Okay, 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 okay fair enough. 
What does it say in definition four? Definition four. To make an earnest petition to a person. Sure. So now, do you agree that prayer is not just to God because it also means to petition a person? Well, in this context, sure, because many people pray, Mormons pray to different people, Hindus pray to different people. That's so I like. asked you about praying Don't to God. I'm, I'm talking about the Bible. That's my okay. authority. So you now, want to use dictionary.com as your authority? Can I nail you on the Bible? Give me the terms for prayer in the Greek New Testament because everyone is going to backfire against you because it's in my post. Well, I asked you Let's... a question a moment ago. Can you why give you me pray the to terms Mary for prayer when the Bible in says we pray to God? Is there any examples in the Bible that we pray to anyone other than to God? Kelly, you just asked me two questions. First, that's you what said I asked it. you before. The same question. I'm just restating re it. Guys, hold on. You see, this guy is a clown. He's not that educated. You see, he can't answer questions. He's an embarrassment. You see, he got caught in a lie as well. I'm doing it for your sake. Should I send this guy back to Anthony Dodgers and Stephanie? Or should I keep barbecuing because this guy's not that smart, as you see? What do you guys want me to do? Because you see, he keeps asking questions. When I go to answer, he changes it. Because I'm doing it for you guys. I don't care about this guy. This guy's not that intelligent. And he confirmed my suspicions. For you guys, should I waste time with him? Let me see. Because this guy, you see, he's a Bible butcher. He doesn't know the scriptures. Maybe you can call Anthony Dodgers to do better so I can bury him as well. All right. There it goes. He left. He left, guys. He left. All right. Guys, he left. He knew he couldn't do it. The guy's a Bible. Now, Kelly, tell that fat cow, Anthony Dodgers and Stephanie uh, Sissy, I'm challenging that cow and Stephanie. I'm challenging them. Debate me and William on the Marian doctrines. You're not that intelligent. You're not that bright. You don't know the Bible. I'm going to be honest. You're a joke. I respect you when you def defend the Trinity, but you're not qualified to discuss anything. Even with the Trinity, your arguments are not that good. Kelly, humble yourself because God humbled you. I'm being honest. Don't take this as an attack. You're a joke. You're not that intelligent. You're not qualified. You're dealing with issues above your pay grade. You don't know the scriptures. This is why God humiliated you because in your arrogance, you think you do. And I was trying to be nice to you. He left. Now here, fat boy Dodgers, fat cow, and Stephanie Sissy, I'm calling you out. Debate William and I, two on two on the Marian doctrines. Come on, fat boy Dodgers. Let's see if you can do better. And I want you to bring up Philippians 3, 18, 19, so I can bury you as well. He left, guys, anyway. He's not intelligent, brethren. I hope you felt it wasn't a waste of your time. Go to those articles. All his objections were answered there. You see what he did? You see it is dishonesty, right? I gave him a link to pray. The coward went to prayer because he knew he got buried. Now, I hope you guys were blessed. I hope you were entertained. You see how he went into 1,001 topics? Remember the topic he went into? What's my authority? Let's get into the Marian doctrines. What's my authority? The guy's a joke. So you guys, are you okay? Are you satisfied? I'm doing it. To abuse of the spirit to serve you. Were you guys okay? I'm here for you. I don't care about him. May God convict him to repent. And hopefully he'll come around. You guys learn? Lepanto, you enjoyed it? This guy got buried. He's a clown. He's not good. Glory to Jesus. Now, if you love me for the sake of the Lord, pray for me. Pray the Holy Spirit will fill me to overflowing. Pray the Holy Spirit will preserve my daughters and I. Give us divine, miraculous, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, and health. And the Lord fill me with the Spirit to be holy and love Jesus and be a doer of his word. Not a hypocrite. Never shame Jesus, but finish the race with integrity and glorify the Lord Jesus. And my daughters fall in love with the Lord. And the Lord does the miracle. Bring them to me and pray for the ministry and the support that it doesn't decrease. And if the Lord blesses me, I will continue to serve you for the sake of Jesus. You don't need me. We need Jesus. But may the Spirit fill me so I can fill you. Protestantism is a joke. Every man and his Bible becomes his own Pope like this guy. He's not that intelligent. I keep saying it. Now you saw it. Gaslighting using narcissistic tactics. You saw that, right? The gaslighting, the victim mentality. I knew he was going to do that. But glory to the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. He delivered into my hands. Now you Kelly fangirls, shut your mouths. This is not the man you want to represent you. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Christ, increase in us 
and make us bold and destroy the blasphemies and the slander against you and your holy mother, whom we love for your sake. Theotokos, pray for us. Queen of heaven, pray for us. Queen mother, pray for us. We love you for the sake of Jesus. We worship you, Father, Holy Spirit, as God, but we honor the saints and Mary as creatures exalted by the grace of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, love you guys. I hope you're blessed. Take care. See you soon. I hope you're blessed. Let me know you really were blessed. And you saw this guy is an arrogant, gaslighting narcissist whom the Lord humiliated. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Keep us in love with you.